Hello and welcome to another Warframe video. In this one, we're going to take a look at Cora Prime. I'm going to show you how to build it for farming, as well as the statistic build with and without a ribbon, so you know how to build them if you have a ribbon and if you don't. So let's get started. So taking a look at Cora's abilities, we have Whip Clop. This is going to be our main DPS. We're going to be dealing damage to the enemies with this one. Uh, also, what we're doing is we're modding the statistic to deal damage with the Whip Clop. We're not actually modding the weapon for dealing the damage itself. We're actually modding the weapon to deal damage through whip claw which we'll see that in just a second it's there to group up enemies in case you are surrounded by a lot of them you can use ensnare it will basically disable them they won't be dealing damage to you in a certain range of course you can easily cloud control them kill them easily it works on acolytes it stops them from casting their abilities but it does not work on Aximus because of the cc immunity but really great ability to have it can also be subsumed on other warframes so it is really really great to use dispensary this slot is for Vinari usually but i subsume dispensary on it you can subsume spectral rage on it for more energy but what i prefer to do is have dispensary on so i can have health orbs energy orbs all those things and spectral rage does take up an additional slot for its augment so i personally prefer to use dispensary rather than spectral rage and lastly strangle doom this is how we're going to farm stuff because of the augment pilfering strangle doom it is really fun if you're farming for stuff like polymer, be it plastids, argon crystals, anything that is, it is really, really great to take Cora in such situations because she has 65% drop chance and along with necros it is really really fun you get additional resources almost every time you kill an enemy so let's take a look at the build so taking a look at the build we have steel charge for melee damage yes it does work on web claw but i'm sure for the for knockdown resistance you can use handspring if you don't have this one yet equilibrium for energy on health pickup and health on energy pickup prime flow for energy max prime continuity for duration health we need some sub ability overextended for range we don't need strength on this build at all Streamline for efficiency. Pilfering Strangle Dooms, you have 65% chance of dropping additional loot and accumulating Whip Claw for every three enemies you hit. You will get 35% additional melee damage on your Whip Claw. It stacks up to 350%, so it is really great to have. Arcing Resistance, because I use this mostly against Infested, you can use Arcing Deflection instead of this one for Slash Resistance. Arcing Energize for Energy. The reason we're using Naramon is because of Power Spike. Combo counter decays while out of combat every 5 seconds instead of completely depleting so you don't have to start from 0 all the way to 12 again. It's really great when we're using with Kyora. So here we are in Steel Path. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down my dispensary so we can get energy from the get cube. Hack this console. Apologies, I forgot I had untraceable mod on my Parazone loadout. I'm gonna put down my Doom. And what we're gonna do is wait for the enemies to get caught up in it. Otherwise, we don't get the 65% additional loot. If you are in a squad, try to tell them to not kill much enemies, especially if you're farming. And if you are farming, of course, most of your squad will know that not to kill enemies while you're doing the killing. Or at least not to kill them outside the doom. They can kill, of course, but try to get them to kill the enemies inside the dooms. So that way you can get additional loot. What I like to do sometimes is ensnare enemies and just kill them with my... Not kill them, just hit them with my melee weapon so we can get the combo counter up faster instead of just relying on the plot to do it. So that's the reason I did that. I'm gonna put down my dispensary again because energy management might be an issue later on. And just kill, 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 kill. With the resource booster, you get four steel lessons instead of two. And with the kitty buff, you can get eight. If you get double kitty buff, you can get 16. And if you're really, really lucky, you can get 32 even. So we're gonna ensnare the acolyte because he will not use his abilities then and just kill him. Corrosive deals a lot of damage. It really helps against the acolytes, killing really faster. So that's the reason I use Corrosive on my statistic. What does perfect even mean? Is there even such a thing?
Yes, that is it for Coda. So taking a look at the Stastic build with Erevan. Now, of course, you don't need Erevan to build a Stastic, but it is really nice to have those additional crit chance, crit damage, whatever the stats may be. Now, I have Erevan with crit damage, crit chance, and additional combo counter, which is really great in building up my combo multiplier quickly. But if you are going for a ribbon, try to have crit damage, crit chance, additional combo counter negative attack speed does not matter at all because like i said statistic does not need attack speed at all but try not to get impact puncture or slash in the negative because it does affect the damage a little bit but yes that is the ribbon stats you are ideally looking for there might be changes to it of course but this is what we're usually going for again blood rush for crit chance for combo crit damage weeping wounds i use like i said you can use gladiator might in this slot i'm building the weapon for corrosive damage as you can see it's for corrosive damage really easy to deal with acolytes with this one even with the infested and other enemies it's really great if you're going for corpus i'll say remove Move shocking touch because you want to deal toxin damage to them so it bypasses his shields and deals direct damage to the health and sacrificial set so we can have red chance of course so that is the build with e river stance does not matter at all we're not modding the weapon to deal damage itself we're modding the weapon so it can deal damage through whip claw blood rush crit chance for combo counter crit damage crit damage plus the set bonus of crit chance per combo multiplier weaving moons i personally prefer to use it because of its status chance per combo multiplier you can use gladiator wise if you want to get additional crit chance per combo for the set bonus but i personally like to use weeping wounds on this one spoil strike for 100 additional damage attack speed does not matter like i said we're not modding the weapon to deal damage itself we're just modding it for kora's web claw gladiator rush not here because of its own stats 6% combo duration we're going to be using Naraman for that but it is there for the set bonus of 20% or 30% if you're using Landwise or any other gladiator mod it's there for the crit chance for combo multiplier set sacrificial set so we can have additional crits on this one the melee damage is not much I know but the crit chance is really good so that is the build Rivenless. So that is it for this video i hope you found it useful i hope you enjoyed it if you did be sure to leave a like share with your friends comment if you have any questions subscribe for more warframe content i'll see you in the next one till then take care bye bye, bye, -bye.